Good morning and welcome to worship at Vestavia Hills Baptist Church. We're going to be online in just a moment and we want you to join us and you can find a worship guide and all the information you need at our website vhbc.com and click stay connected and everything is right there. Join us now as we begin worship. Good morning to all of you who are part of Vestavia Hills Baptist Church and all others who may be joining us this morning. We are uh, delighted to be with you today and of course today is a little bit different because of our time in this country but we are continuing on with the worship of God. I want to say to all of our members that this is a wonderful time for us to pull together and uh, be inventive and be flexible and figure out ways to keep doing church and being church in the days ahead. So we welcome you as you join with us today. Uh, we are going to have uh, some songs that we recorded yesterday by the African Children's Choir and they will be singing later in the service and at the end and we are delighted that they are here as our guests and they're staying with us uh, through Wednesday and we'll be using part of our building for their school and other things. In the meantime, I'd like to direct all of our members to please go look at the website vhbc.com and there is ongoing information that we're going to be providing there about our church and its ministries. Thank you for your faithfulness and particularly to those who may be joining us for the first time. Welcome to our worship time today. Our congregational singing is going to look a little bit different today for all of us as we're worshiping in separate places, but we will be singing together. We'll lift our voices in worship, and I do invite you, even where you are, to rise in body or in spirit and sing together. We may not hear each other's voices, but God will hear us offering our song together. Will you rise in body or in spirit and sing?
Our epistle reading today comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, the stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading comes from John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you? I want to do that again. I'm sorry. Okay, go. The Gospel reading comes from the John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I would go and prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you myself, that where I am going you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Please join me in a time of confession and assurance of pardon. Lord, you said, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Forgive us our lukewarm love and our disobedience. Lord, you said, may we ask for anything in my name. Forgive us when we fail to trust you for help. Lord, you said, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We confess that our lives are often consumed by worry and anxiety. Lord, you said, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Forgive us, Lord, for missing opportunities to bear fruit. Lord. You said, you must testify, for you have been with me. We confess, Lord, that we have been too often silent. Lord, you said, love each other as I loved you. In this, and in so many other ways, we confess our failures and shortcomings. Let's spend a few moments in silence 
in the presence of God and in the presence of our faith community. to all who turn from sin and sorrow, to all who turn to God and hope. This is God's word of grace. We are accepted, we are forgiven, we are loved. Thanks be to God. As forgiven sinners, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God's great love warrants the gift of our lives. Whether we are together in person or not, we who know the love of God and the joy of fellowship have an abundance to offer. Let us be especially generous in these days 
in every way, by reaching out to one another with a phone call or an email and offering encouragement, by being a part of meeting the developing needs in our community, by offering testimonies of certainty in a loving creator who is with us in the midst of uncertainty, and by praying unceasingly for those in crisis. Regarding the finances of our church, our ministries continue, as well as our support of other ministries and missionaries here in our state and around the globe. Though you cannot drop an offering in the plate this morning, you can still make contributions by mail or electronically through our church app or at vhbc.com. Do remember to give. May all the gifts we offer be multiplied and bring glory to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, we give out of what we have been given. Let our response to your generosity be sufficient as we set aside anxiety to take up faith in your provision for us and for your creation. May we return to you our whole selves so that you may fully bless that which we offer. In Christ we pray. Amen.
would you bow with me now in prayer? Mighty God, we come in a time when we feel helpless until we remember our faith and we remember the times when you had worked in such an extraordinary way in Israel, in the life of Jesus, in the early church, through the great saints of all the ages, and through our own lives, through the people who loved us and nurtured us and sometimes led us to you. And so we come today to do what we do every day, and that is to lift our hearts in praise to you and to lift our confidence and trust to say, O oh God, you have the words of life. We come today as people who have been bombarded in recent days by so many distressing pieces of information and news. But you already know where we are. What we want is for you to show us the way that does not take us through the paths of fear and abandonment and loneliness. Today we come because our hearts are filled with concern for others. There are people that all of us worry about because of their health situation, because of their circumstances, because of their isolation, because of their fear. We pray this day for people who are working morning to night to take care of people who are sick. And we pray for their safety and well-being. We thank you for leaders in every area of our society, president and congress, governors, state houses, community leaders, churches, businesses, wherever leadership is being exerted, there is a great responsibility and a burden to find the right things to do. And we pray for them in their discernment of these times. We come, O oh God, and pray for the families of the earth, for mothers and fathers who worry about a child somewhere else, for people whose loved ones are overseas and cannot come home, for those who are in nursing homes, in hospitals, and places where they are most frightened in this moment. We know, O oh God, that we need medical help, and we need all of the ingenuities and all of the gifts of people whom you have equipped to heal, to be blessed and multiplied like loaves and fishes in this time. But we also, O oh God, know that we need the peace of the Holy Spirit that can keep us from panic and terror and obsessive thoughts and frightening things. Protect us from silly conspiracy theories and information that goes from one to the other without ever being questioned or doubted. And we pray for your church now and in every place that a great abundance of faith and courage be ours for this hour. I pray for the people of my congregation whom I and all of us on this staff and in church leadership have loved and served so many years. We pray particularly for all of our seniors and we pray for their health and well-being, for our children and for our adults and youth as they still must be in places in this world. We would not be people who are frightened easily, but people of faith. And so in this hour, let your church shine like a bright light in a world that is quaking and in fear. And this we pray in the strong name of Jesus. Amen.
Well, good morning. And isn't this a little bit different than usual? But I'm here in the sanctuary, and I, I do love that. It feels familiar. And I know my congregation is out there. Some of you probably down on a sandy beach listening, but maybe some of you are at home, gathered around. And what an interesting time this is. So I want to continue my sermon series and speak to this moment for just a bit. And I'm going to read from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 8. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. I'll go on to verse 9 now. Jesus said, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? I got a post on Facebook from Dan Caldwell that showed an aerial view of the Costco parking lot on Saturday, I guess it was, or Friday. And it showed the place packed with cars and people frantically going in to buy supplies and getting ready for who knows what. On Friday, our state was declared to be in a state of emergency, which meant clear the shelves, I suppose. Um, my wife went into uh, Sam's this morning at 7 o'clock and said they were letting people in 10 at a time. There was no meat to be found. It'll get better. But it began to take my mind back to other crisis times that we've been through uh, both individually and as a church. I was remembering back to uh, the year 2000 when an April tornado went across this property and suddenly our offices and part of our sanctuary were damaged badly and we had to completely upend our operation and relocate it in one day. And I remember the panicky feeling and the, the sense of stress and how are we going to do this, how are we going to do that, and the confusion that came along at that time. And it reminded me of how I'm feeling now. Or maybe 9-11, I remember for about two weeks the eerie feeling that the whole world had just stopped. That the movement of economy, the movement of our transportation and travel, all the things that we're used to just going on, suddenly ground to a halt. People were stuck wherever they were and they had to figure out how to get home. It's that kind of feeling that comes in times of crisis. And that's what the disciples were feeling with Jesus in the upper room. They didn't understand that he always knew the journey was going to bring them to this place and this time. But they didn't know it. They didn't understand it. And so now when he starts talking about, I'm going away and you don't know where I'm going and you can't go with me, they got into a panic. What are we going to do? Who's going to take care of us? How are we going to get through this? What's the way out of this situation? It looked pretty grim. And for a few days, it was going to be very grim. God was revealed in history in a person. God didn't reveal ideas only about who he is, but sent Jesus. And so Jesus is the revelation of who God is. And so when he says, I am the way, it's more than just saying you can go this way. It is to say, when you want to know how to get through, how to get through life, how to find the things that really matter, look to him. Look to him because the truth here is embodied. And there's all this anxiety like little children that, that we do feel. It's, it's kind of strange when we get into a time of crisis, we start feeling like kids and all those primal fears and anxieties begin to happen and, and we go into a panic. Um, 
I have a memory of once when my mother, through no fault of her own, was late to pick me up when I was about 10 years old and everybody else had gone home from the ballpark and I was still standing there. And I remember the gnawing fear that came up that what if no one comes? It was irrational, it was crazy, but it was real. Eventually she showed up because, you know, as uh, uh, we sometimes uh, sing to our kids, grown-ups always come back. But sometimes there are places in life that come where there's an enormous crisis and everything we've known before doesn't work like it used to. And that's kind of what's happened this week. In the context of this upper room then, it's Thomas who says, how do we know the way, Lord? And Jesus says, I am the way. Now, there are a lot of ways in the world. There's the way of the world itself. Uh, there's my way, individualism. Uh, there's any old way, which is relativism. There's no way, atheism. And then there's every way, pantheism. But Jesus says, you can rely on this way. I am the way and the truth and the life. And so from now on, you'll know God because you know me. And so the disciples are, are maybe not ready to say that they're ready to do that, but uh, the truth is, in the next few hours after this, one will betray him, another deny him, and they'll all run away except for John, according to his gospel, who's there with Jesus' mother at the cross at the end. And they flee out of terror because suddenly what they thought was going to happen isn't going to happen exactly as they thought. So now in that, they are understandably anxious. If they'd had a Costco, I think they would have run there. Well, there are a lot of ways the church talks about how we know Jesus. We know him through scripture. We know him through his reality in the personal lives of people that we trust and know. We know him through the lived experience of the church and in prayer, but we always look to him. Sometimes we have a temptation to think, well, if I just lived back when Jesus lived, it would have been easier to know who he was. But the truth is, most people that saw him didn't recognize who he was. Most of them didn't follow. Most of them didn't get it. Um, even if we'd been there in the days of his physical presence, it might not have been enough. But the truth is, he can always be known any place and anywhere and any time, including this one. William Temple said, devotion is prior to obedience. What I think he means by that is to love him and to trust him is what helps us to follow him. There are a lot of things about Jesus we can know as public information, but the deeper knowing of Jesus comes because he has made himself real in our lives. That's why we're sitting around our screens today, joined together as his church in the midst of this time. And he makes his dwelling place here uh, in us. And that word dwelling places occurs only here and in verse two in all of the New Testament. He has made a dwelling place inside us that takes us through all things. So the real truth question for all of us is not uh, how am I gonna figure my way out or what's the answer to this problem or how do I fix this? It's simply this, who do I trust right now? Who am I confident in following? And when Jesus says, the one you're looking for, I am he, I am he. It's the same question that Paul put to Jesus when he met him on the Damascus road. He was blinded and persecuting the church. He, the blinding light came and Paul uh, looked up and his first question was interesting. He said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus who you've been persecuting. Paul's life changed just like that. We will find freedom, not in the things we do, or not what we own, or not how well positioned we are, but as we trust him, there is a freedom no matter what comes. And it's very powerful. You know, it's interesting, Thomas only shows up in a couple of places in all of the New Testament. Uh, the first one is uh, in chapter 11 in the story of Lazarus when Jesus 
uh, tells them uh, that they need to go because Lazarus is now dead. And Thomas says, well, let's go so we can die with him. I mean, he was a courageous man. He was not a coward. The second one is here in this passage where he says, where are you going so we can go with you? And it's a powerful thing. Uh, but the third one is in the 20th chapter uh, when Thomas appears in the upper room not yet understanding that Jesus has gone all the way through cross and death and into life. And he gets his nickname from this, Doubting Thomas. Uh, and Jesus says, um, you know, Thomas, come here and touch me. Because Thomas had been away when they first saw him and he said, well, unless I see the the prince in his hands and the, the place in his side, I won't believe it's really him. And then when he saw him, Jesus said, come and touch him. I don't want you to doubt anymore. I don't want you to have any questions about who I am. He didn't need to. He fell on his face and he said, my Lord and my God. What happens to Thomas after this? We're not sure, but the tradition is he went to India. And to this day in South India, there is a church that calls itself the Christians of St. Thomas. In 1500, when Vasco da Gama landed there, it was already there and flourishing. Jesus made an impression on this man who was so uncertain in the midst of stress and storm. And the reason that I talk about this today is simply to say to us as God's church, he is still the way. Now, this is a crazy moment. And the truth is, none of us is exactly sure where it's going. But if we hang together, if we trust in him, if we keep going, he will be the way. The way our church stays together, the way you and the people you love make it through this time, the way that we don't tear each other apart in accusations and blame and fear, he will be the way. He will be the way to solve this virus, to bring healing to people who need it, to care for those who are suffering, and to find ways to carry on the work of the church, come what may. That's my hope and our prayer uh, for these days. I'm thinking about all of you today. I've had you on my hearts all week as I've been thinking about where this is going to go and how people were struggling with it. I know people in many places who are. But the way that we were following a week ago is the same way now. One of the best reasons to believe in Jesus is because he is the way. Would you bow with me in prayer? Dear Lord, remind us that your way and your truth equals your life. Help us to trust you more, to be unafraid, to find ways to help each other, and to shine as your Christian church as never before, because the world around us has never needed us more to be true to who we are than this moment. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
It has been wonderful to be together today. I hope that where you are, wherever you are, you have felt the connection of God's people in this time. And may God bless and keep you. As we go today, we have the African Children's Choir to give us a sun benediction, and we are thankful for that. So let's hear them as we go from this place in peace. 